I'm an agricultural engineer and I've been working most of my professional life on, on food security issues, food sovereignty, right to food and anti-hunger programs. Food has barely been considered a commons um, anywhere. I mean, food producing uh, resources, yes, like seeds, water, land, etc. But commons was, was basically never uh, labeled and considered as a commons. So I started to explore the idea that why not? if it's an essential resource and if it's so important for human beings, for the, it's a cultural determinant, it's a human right. It's, of course, it's a tradable resource, but at the same time, it's a natural resource produced by nature. So, and it's really essential for each and everybody. I mean, we need to eat three times per day. And yet, uh, food is, is not a commons. I mean, it's a, I always use the same, uh, an interesting parallelism with, with health and education. Because if food would be considered as a commons, it would be governed as a commons. What means that there would be a, a community, a community could be a local level or could be a national level, uh, and, and a common in. What means that uh, everybody should have a stake, should have a saying, should participate in governing the food system because everybody has an interest as everybody eats every day. But so far it's not like this. So far it's basically a market mechanism that is based on supply demand, the invisible hand, theory of rational choice, individualism, the lower the price the better. So this, type, this, this approach that is more atomist, individualist, uh, and, and very competitive. And, and in that sense, uh, the, the, the most important goal of the uh, industrial food system, it's basically a profit maximization. It's not increasing the, type, the, the, the quality of the food. It's not about uh, sustainability. It's not about that much agroecology. It's about uh, having the lowest price in the market in order to sell the most in order to earn the maximum amount of money. And well, I think that it actually it doesn't work pretty well. And, uh, and the other way would be, what if, what if we consider food as a commons, as a public good, like health and education? Of course, the state should have a stronger hand, but also there should be a, 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 more, a wider space for civil society to do things by themselves civil society that they are organizing themselves as, as, like commoners or community supported agriculture, food buying groups, uh, eco villages, uh, traditional food producing commons like uh, uh, Montes de Mano Comun in Galicia, like uh, Crofts in Scotland, like Baldios in Portugal, like uh, Every Man's Right in the Scandinavian countries, like uh, Emphiteusis in Italy. So Europe is full of food producing commons that are already producing food in a different way not exclusively based on market rules. So if we consider food as a commons or as a public good, I mean, possible, uh, let's say, concrete implications. Well, we could have perhaps uh, farmers and fishermen working for the municipalities to be engaged as public servants because the municipalities and the state, they have an impressive uh, demand of food. So there could be farmers producing food for the state needs as we have doctors or economists that are working for the state, why we don't have farmers? Another thing would be that, for instance, school meals could be guaranteed by, by law for free. In, in Spain, uh, there is a, a constitutional provision that says that education is a right for everybody and the state has to guarantee every student a place in a school, no matter how much money do you earn or if you are wealthy or not. Well, we could have something similar for school meals, for instance. Another issue, for instance, uh, could be um, that uh, instead of uh, channeling so, so much funds towards uh, industrial food system and corporations and being landowners, um, a, big chunk, a big chunk of that uh, common agricultural policy could be channeled towards small-scale farmers, towards uh, fruit-producing commons, that are more resilient, more ecological, agroecological, sustain, uh, sustainable. They are, uh, um, uh, let's say, they are reservoirs of uh, agroecological knowledge, uh, European heritage. So instead of having so much money to industrial agriculture, that money could go to something else. We could have public bakeries. Uh, everybody could be entitled to have a, a bread of loaf every day. Well, for free. Well, not for free, because we pay those things in advance with our taxes. But uh, if we are entitled to have uh, free roads, uh, it's never free, because we, I mean, the roads are paid with uh, everybody's taxes. But if we are entitled to have roads, why not to have basic food? Because, uh, well, according to the, the pyramid of needs, in principle, eating is, is more basic than 
having a, a paved road. If we change the, the, the normative regard, the, the consideration that we have on food, the, the policies would automatically change. As it happened at the beginning of the 20th century with education and health, that all along history they were considered private goods and up to a certain point they decided that they could be granted and, uh, let's say, guaranteed by, by the state. If we are thinking about the food commons, we may basically establish two, two types of food commons. Ones that are material, the food per se, and, and the seeds that are producing the food, the land, and the water, and some commons that are immaterial, that are knowledge commons. And there are some, a couple of interesting knowledge commons related to food. The first one is, is cooking recipes. And in cooking recipes, uh, there are, are basically an open knowledge. And it has always been open since the very beginning. And, and there is a lot of innovation in cookie recipes, and we have, you know, these, these uh, famous chefs that are producing food in very fancy restaurants, and they earn money out of it, but their recipes are always open. So close IP rights, intellectual property rights, they are, they are basically never associated to food. And food is a very thriving and innovative domain. And, and that knowledge is always, is basically open. So... Our mothers are, are transferring that knowledge to us on how to cook things, you know, I mean, the different tricks, uh, I mean, you put more salt and then you stop frying uh, and then you put the garlic, but not before, later on. And that's an, a huge amount of knowledge that human societies hold in an open way. And, and, and it's not, it's not bad worded. It's something that is, is constantly evolving. And, and because it's open, it's constantly evolving. So it's, that, that's linked to the a type of knowledge or digital commons, knowledge commons, that is. Then, of course, there is a, a direct relationship between food as a commons and food producing commons, like seeds, that it's basically claim uh, as a commons, uh, the physical part and the knowledge, the genetic resources, the genetic codes that are in, in the seeds. Of course, uh, food is basically food produced on earth, because also we have fish uh, and seafoods, etc. But food produced on earth is based on land. Land could also, I mean, I think that land also should be considered as a commons. By being a commons, either food or land, it doesn't prevent that land can be owned privately, okay? We consider health as a public good and there are private hospitals. We consider education as a public good and there are private schools. Profit maximization has not to be the only driver of the food as a commons system. So the, the most important driver, uh, and let's say the, the, the normative threshold would be that we are producing, we, food producers. Food producers, they should earn a living out of it, but the main goal of the food system, either producers or the state or consumer, should be to enable everybody to eat. Because we produce enough food. I mean, we produce enough food for everybody, and actually we are wasting one-third of the total food produced, and we are still producing food in excess. But there are 800 million people that are hungry. Today we are going to, uh, have, a, to, we are going to have a, a, a joint meeting with uh, members of parliament, of the European Parliament, where we are going to present the idea. And I, I hope that uh, we can get, we can, I mean, this, this uh, event may open up a process uh, uh, a long-lasting process uh, of exchange uh, and inter-exchange uh, of uh, debate with the European institutions, starting with the European Parliament, but I hope that uh, later on it can, be also, can, it can also be with the European Commission, in order to, let's say, to, to get acquainted to each other. I mean, the, the commoners' movement and the European authorities. Because uh, so far, the European authorities, the European Commission, through the different policies, they are not very, uh, they're, let, let's say, they are quite oblivious about the commons. Uh, the commons are quite obscure to them because, uh, well, they basically, it's, it's a different mentality. For them, it's basically the market primacy, whereas for the commons, there are other drivers. And uh, the common agricultural policy, actually, it doesn't even mention the word commons. In the, in the 2013 uh, latest reform. No? The, the Common Agricultural Policy was reformed at the end of, of 2013. And, and in, in the whole set of documents, there is no mention at all on the, on the food producing commons, neither the commons in general, nor seed as a commons, water as a commons, land as a commons. We need to open up this process. 
uh, but not a one-off exercise, what means that uh, today we'll present and then we'll forget about each other. No, I mean, the point is that to keep a regular and, and constant uh, debates, uh, meetings, uh, prepare papers, uh, exchange information in order to hopefully for the next reform of the common agricultural policy, there could be an, an envelope, and let's say in a specific uh, chapter for food producing commons to use European funds in order to support those food producing commons. Those food producing areas governed as a commons, they are, uh, they are reservoirs of biodiversity. Those areas are important areas for Nature 2000, uh, the Nature 2000 network. Those places are extremely important for climate change mitigation because basically they are absorbing CO2 and greenhouse uh, gas emissions. They are quite important for uh, democracy because in those places like the Huertas in Valencia, they are all rooted uh, democratic systems of reflexive governance where people, they really participate and they have a voice in their own businesses. It could be good if at least the European policymakers can be aware of the importance of those uh, food producing commons, uh, the places where commons is, pr is produced in a communal way, and, and they could, uh, let's say, uh, think better policies about those places and channel more funds to sustain uh, and increase the existence of uh, food producing commons.